Hello and welcome back to another segment of the D Mo Show. The D Mo Show. Congratulations on the win. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. We really appreciate the love. And we have some fan questions for you today. I'm ready. I'm Perfect. Ready. So the first one is California Shorn asked, now that you've got your mama car, what is your next purchase? Next purchase. Uh, I really, you know, don't buy many, many things. You know, I'm, I'm stingy with it. But like the next purchase for me would probably be either a new pair of boots or a belt buckle. You know, I got some stuff coming for my truck. So I'm, I'm pretty done with my truck project. But new boots, belt buckle, something like that. Or a new jacket for Saturday, a, a stampede. Okay. And congratulations on being able to do that. How does that feel? Which part? Well, buying your mom the car, the biggest oh, part. Well, that, <laughs> You know, it's a dream come true. I mentioned that in my tweet. Uh, it's something I've always wanted to do, lifelong goal of mine, and uh, being able to do it at this stage in my life, you know, uh, makes me happy. Uh, you know, I've been on this earth for 21 years, and I've never seen uh, one day where my mom couldn't couldn't do anything for me, couldn't wouldn't sacrifice anything for me. So uh, being able to give a piece of that, uh, just showing my appreciation for it. I know, like, she could have done without and she would have been perfectly fine. But uh, just being able to do something for her always makes me smile. I believe it. Now, Magna Horn asked, do you guys feel like Coach K is feeding more and more defense to you each week? Or are you just running basic stuff and trying to learn how to react to the things that happen better? I feel like a little bit of both. You know, it's always something to get better on with the basic stuff, uh, fundamentally stuff. Uh, but, yes, he is feeding us more stuff each week, and that's just throughout the week because, I mean, throughout the season, teams watch old games uh, and they get that film. So, of course, we got to come out with new stuff uh, to keep the offense on their toes as well. We don't want to go out there in the same stuff. You know, they expose that from uh, the previous games that we played in. So, uh, yeah, he definitely come up with new stuff, feed us new stuff. And, you know, as football players, that's a thing you got to get used to. You can't just take one thing and expect to run with it the whole season and not get exposed. So uh, that's just one thing as a defense, taking in new stuff, learning it quick, and, you know, going out there Saturday and executing. Hook'em Chargers asked, Big 12 versus SEC, what are the main differences that you see? Main differences I see. Uh, Big 12, is, I mean, uh, SEC is a more, we're going to try to big man you football type league, you know, bigger O-line. Uh, and as far as Big 12 is, we're going to get you out on the perimeter and we're going to try to out-athlete you. So uh, make you run, make you tackle in space, uh, make you line up. Uh, uh, know your assignments, but it's going to be basic stuff. We're either going to spit the uh, ball out to the perimeter, let our athletes make moves against your athletes, or we're going to run inside zone and try to catch you slipping uh, with the tempo offense. So you think that SEC is more like physicality, whereas in the Big 12, you're just more athletic? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying on that end. I like it. Okay, that's an interesting perspective. I've never heard that one before. Okay, so Orange Pill asks, how does your current staff teach defensive players not to target, where a split-second move by the person with the ball may result in targeting on the defensive player? Well, you never want to take uh, somebody's physicality away from them. And that's one thing that our coaches emphasize. Like, we're not trying to hold y'all back. We want y'all to be physical. But at the same time, like, the game is changing, and you got to be smart with it because, I mean – we need everybody on the field at the end of the day. And, you know, if I go out with a targeting call, that's not only hurting me the next game, but, you know, it's hurting the team because I'm no longer on the field. So basically being smart, but you got to play aggressive. You know, it's an aggressive sport, uh, you know, split second decision. You know, it's hard in some cases. Yeah. Like I've I seen a lot of targeting calls last weekend where, you know, it's questionable. Like we, we can't do nothing. Me, a defender, you know, you see the running back lowering their head down 
I mean, you don't, you're not trying to get ran over. So at that point, you're just trying to get lower than them. And, you know, you ended up hitting them with your head, any point of the body. It, mm-hmm. It's hard. So, you know, it's definitely hard on the, the defense to try to keep the head out of it or keep the head up. But, you know, it's, it's just part of the game now. Do you think that the targeting, this is off subject, none of the questions, but do you think that the targeting rules are a little bit too nitpicky now? Because I did see what you were talking about for some of the other teams that played this weekend. They got called for targeting and the player was just kind of like, do you want me to just let them score? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly so, what I'm talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. I've, I've been feeling this way for a little bit, but you can tell the game is turning into an offensive game. You know, the, it's what people want to see. People want to see touchdowns. You know, not so many people want to come to a game where it's zero to three. So, uh, you know, it's it's protecting the offensive players. And the GOAT said it himself, Tom Brady, like you, you're punishing the defense for uh, the offense making poor mistakes by putting their head down at the quarterback, you know, putting the receiver in a position where he he's going to take a hit. So, uh, you know, it sucks on the defensive side, but at the same time, it's the rules. It's the rules. The rules. Next boy asked, how does it, how does being a safety previously help you in your current role? Or is it completely different? Uh, I was able to take a lot from the safety position. Uh, obviously my, my covering skills was able to carry over. Uh, you know, I'm not dealing with that many speed guys now I'm more you know, body end up big tight ends or, you know, running backs at the backfield. So that was a, that helped me a lot. Uh, but, you know, uh, being able to see the whole defense, know what everybody doing at safety. And I was able to carry that also down at the linebacker position, knowing what the, where the safety is going to be with my run fits and stuff like that. Uh, the passing game, knowing like what the uh, receiver, where they're trying to get to the open space, knowing what the, where the quarterbacks is looking to go with the ball. So a lot was able to carry over. And they also asked, do you miss having the opportunity to get your hands on the football as a DB? I do, but, uh, you know, I, I get some of those same opportunities as a linebacker position. The most thing, like, I miss playing safety is, like, that 15-yard burst you get when you're about to hit somebody. Like, I used to love coming down here from 15 yards, full speed. Now I'm in a box, you know, it's a tight window. You don't get that hard of a hit, but I mean, that's one thing I do miss about that position. Longhorn CPA 82 asks, do you primarily eat on campus? I do. Uh, They feed us. I go to the tank, you know, the tank. Uh, So they feed us three times a day. So I, I try to get my meals there most of the time. If not, you know, I got some at the house. I cook up or I run down to Chili's, get me the Cajun chicken pasta. The Chili's? Oh my gosh, I love Chili's. <laughs> it's right down the street too. So it I'm, is. I'm there every other day if I'm not eating at the uh, on campus. But yeah, they feed us there almost every other hour. So it's yeah. no point of me spending money all the time. What's your favorite thing that they feed you in Tank? Favorite thing, now I used, when I first got there, I was the the omelet guy. Like I go to the egg station, I want me an omelet. But nowadays, you know, I'm overhead. So, you know, that ain't got old. Now I just really get me a burger made every day. You know, a double meat burger with cheese and bacon. Some of the, some basic stuff. Give me a little shake, a little smoothie over there. Uh, the smoothies, they went downhill real quick. They have to say, so you, good. <laughs> like I tell the uh the freshmen that all the time, like you're gonna eat here for four years every day. Like it's it's gonna get old. Like I know on the recruiting visit, it seems like dang, we get this every day, but trust me, it gets old. I feel that. I feel that. Okay. Last one. Z Longhorn99 asked, I'd like to learn about his family. Who raised him? And does he have any brothers and sisters? Well, my mom raised me. Uh the picture you saw with the car, that's my beautiful, wonderful mom. You know, I get my looks from her. But, uh, yeah, I got two older sisters. My oldest sister got two daughters, KK and Channing. Those are my little broke best friends. I love them to death. Then I, uh, my oldest sister, but the youngest one, so the second oldest, Renasha, uh, she actually was up here. And then I got a, a younger brother, 
Trin. He's 20, so he's not that young, but he's younger than me. And then I got another younger sister, Mariah. Do any of them play sports too? Well, they did. My older sister actually played college volleyball. Mm. And then the one under her, she actually went, but, you know, she was fed up with sports. So she decided she was done with sports. And then my younger brother did play football at a junior college last year, but, you know, we've been sports all our lives. So he was, he was done with it. So, you know, I'm the last one. So mom's still traveling all the way to Austin to see me. She's been traveling for going on 20 some years now. All her kids was at a different place playing. And, you know, I'm the last one before the grandbaby started playing again. <laughs> That's nice. You have a big family. I do. You do that come uh, to all, the, all the home games? Home games away. So my actually my grandma, her mom had 13 kids. So out of those 13, almost all of them got four. And that's when my mom come in. And so, and now my grandma, she has about, I say maybe 13, 14 grandkids right now. So yeah, we we're big. Who's feeding y'all during like Thanksgiving? We go about five, six houses. Okay. Five, you have to spread houses. it out. Spread it out. So you eat a little here. Then you know where you're going next. So you know you like something there, you're gonna eat a little there. You just going all the way around, all the way around. <laughs> Thank you so much for answering these fan questions. I appreciate it. Y'all played a really good game, a blowout. So it really can't get any better than that. And you guys have Texas Tech coming up, the first Big 12 game of the year. So how do you feel about that? Oh, excuse me. I'm excited, you know, coming off that win, confidence up. Uh, but we know Texas Tech is a good team. So, you know, I'm excited to get back to it. Everything that we want is right in front of us. And now it's just time for us to go take it. Okay, go take it. Then the star, the Marvion Overshone for the Demo Show. I'm your host, Serenity Douglas. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas football YouTube channel. Thank you.